The blue-skinned Breen Princess Nesso screamed as the ruthless warlord Karad jabbed psychic blockers into her skull, rendering her mind control useless. Now humanity was her only hope. Mercenary Stephen Scorer snorted derisively as the Galactic Council relayed Princess Nesso's dire situation. The powerful psychic Breen race just had their princess kidnapped by warlord Karad. Apparently, Nesso could mentally control the Breen's legendary Psy-Tech with her rare ability, and if Karad exploited that power, he could conquer the whole damn galaxy. The Council had already begged the toughest warrior races to save her, but they all chickened out, scared of Karad's might and the Breen's potential. So in desperation, the Council turned to their last resort, humans. We had a rep for Ballsy, out-of-the-box moves, they promised a fortune to Scora for rescuing Nesso Solo. Scora hated aliens, especially after how the Council disrespected humanity for so long. But this was his shot to prove human worth and secure their galactic street cred. The Council made it clear, if he failed, Nesso would die, Karad would enslave the galaxy, and humans would be branded as weak and useless. They gave Scora a state-of-the-art stealth ship, and experimental weapons, but they emphasized that his wits and skills were the only things standing in the way of galactic domination. Sending backup would just trigger a devastating space war. Scorer grunted as he fired up his ship. The Council was wrong to put their faith in him. He didn't want to play hero. He just wanted the cash and a chance to shove it in the faces of those snooty aliens, time to show them what humans were made of. Scorer's sleek stealth ship sliced through the void, slipping past the heavily armed battle stations that encircled Karad's desolate planet like a lethal necklace. The ship's advanced sensors probed the surface, seeking the faint flicker of Nesso's life signs amidst the dead world. A ping sounded, and coordinates flashed on the display. There, deep within Karad's fortress, a pulsing blip of light. The princess was alive, but her signal was weak fading. Scorer frowned as he studied the fortress schematics. An impenetrable energy shield enveloped the structure, making a frontal assault tantamount to suicide. He needed a different approach, something unexpected. A plan took shape in his mind, audacious and risky. Perfect. With a few taps on the console, Scorer deactivated the ship's cloaking device. Alarms blared as Karad's sensors detected the intruder. Scorer smirked. Let them come. He was counting on the warlord's arrogance and curiosity about the lone human foolish enough to challenge him. Tractor beams locked onto the ship, dragging it into a cavernous hangar. Armed guards surrounded the vessel, weapons trained on the airlock. The door hissed open, and Scorer emerged, hands raised in mock surrender. The guards sneered, underestimating the unassuming human, a mistake they would soon regret. In a blur of motion, Scorer sprang into action. Enhanced strength and agility, courtesy of the Council's genetic tinkering, made short work of his captors. Bones snapped and bodies crumpled as Scorer fought his way deeper into the fortress, a whirlwind of calculated violence. Genetically engineered super-soldiers poured into the corridors, their massive forms blocking Scorer's path. They were raw power incarnate, but Scorer had something they lacked— experience, and razor-sharp reflexes honed in countless battles. He danced around their clumsy blows, striking with surgical precision at weak points in their armor. One by one they fell, no match for the battle-hardened mercenary. At last, Scorer reached the central control room. He burst through the doors, ready for anything, but Karad was nowhere to be seen. Instead, a lone figure stood before a glowing energy siphon, his back to Scorer. The figure turned, revealing a gaunt, sadistic face. Xanthia, Karad's second in command. Ah, the human, Xanthia sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. You're too late. The shield is powered by the princess's own psychic energy. She's fueling her own prison, and there's nothing you can do about it. Scorer's eyes narrowed. Behind Xanthia he could see Nesso, her once vibrant blue skin now pale and lifeless. Tubes and wires snaked from her body, leeching away her power. Anger surged through Scorer's veins, cold and sharp. 
Let her go, he growled, dropping into a fighting stance. Xanthia laughed, a cruel grating sound. You'll have to go through me first, human. And I should warn you, I've mastered an ancient alien martial art that allows me to predict your every move. The alien lunged forward, his movements a blur. Scora barely had time to react as Xanthia's fist grazed his cheek. The alien was fast, and his technique was flawless. But Scora had a trick up his sleeve. His fighting style was entirely human, unpredictable and chaotic. He let his instincts take over, striking with a wild, unorthodox fury that Xanthia's rigid training couldn't anticipate. They traded blows in a deadly dance, Xanthia's precision against Scora's raw tenacity. But for all his skill, Xanthia couldn't match Scora's sheer determination. The human kept coming, absorbing hits that would have felled a lesser man, always pushing forward. In a last desperate gambit, Xanthia seized Nesso, holding her limp form in front of him like a shield. Scora hesitated, unwilling to risk harming the princess. But he had one more trick to play. His hand darted to his belt, retrieving an experimental stun weapon. The beam lanced out, passing harmlessly through Nesso's body, to strike Xanthia full in the chest. The alien convulsed and dropped, his ancient martial arts no match for human ingenuity. Scora leapt to the energy siphon, tearing at the controls. Sparks flew as he ripped out wires and smashed crystalline relays. With a final stuttering pulse, the machine died, and the fortress shook as its shields collapsed. Alarms screamed to life, a countdown to self-destruction. Scora gathered Nesso in his arms and ran, retracing his steps through the crumbling fortress. Smoke and flames filled the corridors as Scora reached his ship. He dove through the airlock, slamming his fist against the controls. The engines roared to life, and the ship rocketed away from the doomed fortress. Behind them, a massive explosion bloomed, a miniature sun that consumed Karad's stronghold in a maelstrom of fire and debris. Skora's ship limped through the void, the hum of the engines punctuated by the occasional spark from damaged systems. In the dim light of the cockpit, Nesso stirred, her eyes fluttering open. She groaned, pushing herself up on shaky arms. Where, where are we? she asked, her voice hoarse. Skora glanced over his shoulder. On our way to the Galactic Council, mission accomplished, Princess. Nesso frowned, studying the human who had saved her life. Why did you do it? Why risk everything for me? Skora shrugged. It's just a job. I'm a mercenary, remember? But as the journey wore on, Scora found himself drawn into conversation with Nesso. She spoke of her hopes for a galaxy free from tyranny, where all species could live in harmony. Her compassion and idealism were foreign to Scora, who had always seen the universe as a brutal, unforgiving place. You really believe that? he asked, skeptical. That peace is possible? Nesso nodded, her eyes shining with conviction. I have to. It's what my people have always strived for. Scora fell silent, contemplating her words. For the first time in years, he felt a flicker of doubt about his chosen path. Suddenly the comm crackled to life, a distress call from a nearby planet under siege by Karad's forces. Neso leapt to her feet. We have to help them, she cried. Scora shook his head. Not my problem. My job is to get you to the council, that's it. Neso's face fell, but you could make a difference, you could be a hero, inspire others to stand against Karad. Skora laughed bitterly. Hero? In this galaxy, the strong prey on the weak. That's how it's always been, one man can't change that. Their argument was cut short by a blaring proximity alert. Karad's warship loomed on the sensors, weapons primed. Surrender the princess, Karad's voice boomed over the comm. I've placed a tracker inside her. There's no way you can hide. Scora's hand hovered over the controls, ready to comply. But something stopped him. Maybe it was Nesso's unwavering belief in him. Or maybe he was just tired of running. Whatever the reason, he found himself answering Karad with a defiant smirk. Go to hell, he said, and cut the comm. Karad's ship opened fire, lances of energy ripping through Scora's shields, Skora wrenched the controls, sending the ship into a dizzying spiral. Warning lights flashed and alarms blared as he pushed the engines to their limit, desperately trying to evade the onslaught. 
but it was no use. A final searing blast tore through the hull, sending the ship tumbling towards the planet below. Scora fought with the controls, managing to guide the crippled vessel into a rough landing on the planet's surface. Smoke filled the cockpit as Scora unbuckled his harness. His head ringing from the impact, he stumbled to Neso's side, helping her to her feet. We need to move, he said, glancing at the ship's ruined systems. That ship's not flying again. They limped from the wreckage, Neso leaning heavily on Scora's shoulder. In the distance, the whine of Karad's landing craft grew louder. Scora spotted a cave entrance nearby and steered them towards it, hoping it would provide some shelter. Inside, Scora eased Nesso to the ground, examining her wounds. She winced as he applied a field dressing, her blue skin pale in the dim light. Hold still, Scora muttered, reaching for his toolkit. Need to get that tracker out of you. As he worked, Nesso began to speak softly recounting tales of her people's history and philosophy. Despite himself, Skora found himself drawn in, questioning the beliefs that had guided him for so long. In turn, Skora found himself sharing his own story, the tragedy that had set him on this path, the choices he regretted. As they talked, a newfound respect grew between them, a sense of understanding bridging the gulf between their worlds. A chirp from Scora's communicator interrupted their conversation. The Council's rescue team, homing in on their position, Scora felt a surge of relief, but it was short-lived. Outside the cave, the sound of Karad's forces grew louder, the thud of heavy boots and the clink of weapons drawing near. Scora's jaw tightened as he reached for his blaster. The final confrontation was at hand, and this time he knew he wouldn't be fighting just for himself. He glanced at Nesso seeing his own determination mirrored in her eyes. Together, they stepped out to face their fate. Skora's eyes darted from the cave entrance to Neso's exhausted face. The thud of Karad's approaching soldiers echoed through the stone chamber. Fighting them head-on would be certain death. He needed a plan. Fast. We have to go deeper, Skora said, pulling Neso to her feet. Use the caves against them. Nesso nodded, too drained to argue. Scora led the way, his enhanced senses guiding them through the twisting labyrinth of tunnels. The darkness closed around them, broken only by the faint glow of bioluminescent fungi clinging to the damp walls. Behind them, the sound of pursuit grew louder. Karad's soldiers relentless and unyielding. Scora paused at a fork in the path, his mind racing. He snatched a fist-sized rock from the ground and hurled it down the left tunnel. It clattered against the stone, the noise echoing like a gunshot. That way? A gruff voice shouted from behind. Don't let them escape! Skora grinned, leading Nesso down the right fork. He moved with quick, silent steps, his boots barely disturbing the loose gravel. At a narrow choke point, he paused, eyeing the support beams that held up the tons of rock above. Stand back! he whispered to Nesso. Bracing himself, Scora slammed his shoulder into the aged wood. It splintered and cracked, the tunnel rumbling ominously. He struck again and again, until with a deafening roar, the ceiling collapsed. Rock and debris filled the passage, creating an impenetrable barrier between them and their pursuers. That should slow them down, Scora said, dusting off his hands. Nesso leaned against the wall, her breath coming in ragged gasps, I can't. I need to rest. Skora frowned but nodded. He scanned the tunnel, spotting a small alcove hidden in the shadows. There we can catch our breath. As they huddled in the darkness, the sound of Karad soldiers filtered through the rock, muffled shouts and the whine of energy drills as they worked to clear the blockage. Nesso closed her eyes, her brow furrowed in concentration. I'll try to buy us some time. Her mind reached out, brushing against the thoughts of their pursuers. Confusion, disorientation, phantom sounds and false trails that led them astray. It was taxing, but it would have to be enough. Skora watched her work, a newfound respect in his eyes. Never thought I'd be grateful for psychic mumbo-jumbo, he muttered. Nesso managed a weak smile. You're welcome. They pressed on, delving deeper into the mountain's heart. The tunnels grew older, 
the stone worn smooth by eons of water and time. Scorer's instincts prickled, a sense of ancient mystery hanging thick in the stale air. And then they saw it, a cavernous chamber, the walls lined with strange glowing hieroglyphs. Alien architecture rose from the rock, twisting spires and arched bridges spanning an underground chasm, a city buried and forgotten. What is this place? Nesso breathed, her eyes wide. Skora shook his head just as awed. No idea, but if it's been down here this long, it's got to have some defences. He approached a towering console, covered in dust and strange symbols. His fingers brushed the controls and the city hummed to life. Lights flickered on, ancient machines stirring from their slumber. A holographic display burst into existence, alien text scrolling across the screen. Scorer squinted, trying to make sense of the foreign language. His gaze fell on a series of symbols that repeated, accompanied by a pulsing glyph that reminded him of a shield. Bingo, he muttered, tapping the control. A wave of energy rippled out from the city's center, washing over them like a static charge. The hair on Scorer's neck stood on end as the shield enveloped the cavern, sealing them off from the tunnels beyond. That should hold them off, he said, but even as he spoke he could feel the shield wavering, weakening. Whatever power source the city relied on, it was nearly depleted. Nesso sagged against him, her strength fading. We can't stay here, she said. It's only a matter of time. Scorer's jaw clenched. She was right. The shield bought them a respite, nothing more. They needed a way out, and fast. His eyes fell on the console once more, an idea sparking to life. I'm going to broadcast a signal, he said, his fingers flying over the controls. Draw the council and Karad's goons to our location. With any luck, they'll be too busy shooting at each other to notice us slipping away. Nesso looked uncertain but nodded. Do it. Scorer input the commands, and the city thrummed with power. A beacon pulsing out into the depths of space, a call to arms, and a desperate gamble. The shield flickered and died, just as the first of Karad's soldiers broke through into the cavern. Laser fire filled the air, scorching the ancient stone. Scorer drew his blaster, placing himself between Nesso and the onslaught. He fought like a man possessed, his every movement precise and deadly. Soldiers fell before him, but more took their place, an endless tide of enemies. Nesso lent her strength to his, her mind shielding him from the worst of the barrage. Together, they were a force to be reckoned with. But it wasn't enough. The soldiers pressed in, their numbers too great. Scorer's blaster clicked empty, and he threw it aside, resorting to his fists and fury. Beside him, Nesso faltered her psychic reserves running dry. Just as all seemed lost, a new sound filled the cavern. The roar of engines, the thud of boots on stone, the council's rescue team charging into the fray with weapons blazing. At their head, a squad of human warriors, their faces grim and determined. They crashed into Karad's forces like a tidal wave, turning the tide of battle in a heartbeat. In the chaos, Skora seized Nesso's hand, Run! he yelled, pulling her towards a side tunnel. They ran, the sounds of battle fading behind them. The tunnel sloped upwards, leading them back to the surface, to freedom and the council ship waiting to take them to safety. But as they burst out into the open air, Skora knew this was only the beginning. Karad would never stop hunting Naso, not until he had her powers for himself. The fight was far from over. The council ship docked at the Grand Citadel, the heart of galactic governance. Skora and Nesso stepped out onto the gleaming platform, greeted by a sea of cheering faces. Dignitaries from a hundred worlds crowded around them, eager to shake their hands and offer their gratitude. You've done the impossible, said the council's leader, a tall ethereal being draped in shimmering robes. Karad's reign of terror is finally over. Skora shifted uncomfortably, unused to the attention. Nesso, however, wore a serene smile, her eyes sparkling with joy. It was a team effort, she said, glancing at Skora. We couldn't have done it without each other. The celebration moved indoors, 
to a grand hall filled with music and laughter. Scora found himself swept up in the festivities, trading war stories with the human warriors who had come to their aid. For a moment he allowed himself to relax, to bask in the glow of victory. But the moment was short-lived. A deafening explosion rocked the citadel, sending the revelers sprawling. Scora leapt to his feet, his instincts screaming danger. We're under attack, someone shouted as alarms began to blare. Scora raced to a window, his heart sinking as he saw the sky filled with enemy ships. Karad's forces, launching a full-scale assault on the citadel, he had underestimated the warlord's rage, his thirst for vengeance. We need to evacuate, he said, turning to Nesso. But she was already moving, rallying the council members and warriors to action. We stand and fight, she said, her voice ringing with authority. This is our home and we will defend it. Scora nodded grimly, drawing his blaster. Together they raced to the front lines, joining the desperate battle against Karad's horde. The human warriors fought with unmatched ferocity, their weapons cutting swathes through the enemy ranks. But Karad's forces were relentless, pouring into the citadel like a tide of death. As they fell back, fighting for every inch of ground, Skora noticed something strange. Some of the council members, the ones who had been most vocal in their support of Nesso, were nowhere to be seen. A cold suspicion gripped him, a sense of betrayal that cut deeper than any blade. His fears were confirmed when they reached the inner sanctum, the heart of the council's power. There, waiting for them with a triumphant sneer, was Karad himself, flanked by a group of council members. You fools, the warlord spat. Did you really think you could defeat me so easily? Nesso stared at the traitorous council members in shock, her face a mask of pain and disbelief. Why, she whispered, why would you do this? One of them, a gaunt reptilian creature, stepped forward. Power, he hissed. With your abilities at our command, we can rule the galaxy. Karad has promised us riches beyond imagining, and a place at his side. Skora snarled, his finger tightening on the trigger. But Naso laid a hand on his arm, her touch a silent plea for restraint. We can't win this fight, she said softly. Not here, not now. She turned to the warriors, her voice steady despite the chaos raging around them. Fall back, she commanded. We need to regroup to find allies who can help us. Skora hesitated, every instinct screaming at him to stand and fight, but he trusted Nesso, trusted her judgment and her wisdom. With a nod, he began to retreat, covering their escape with a barrage of blaster fire. They fled the citadel, leaving the council and their betrayal behind. But as they raced through the stars, seeking refuge among Skora's old mercenary contacts, he knew that this was only the beginning. Karad would not rest until he had Nesso and the power she represented. As they huddled in the cramped quarters of a smuggler's ship, poring over stolen data files and intercepted transmissions, a chilling realization began to dawn. Karad's ambitions went far beyond mere conquest. He sought something ancient and terrible, a superweapon from a bygone age that could enslave the minds of entire planets. And the key to unlocking that weapon the final piece of the puzzle was Naso herself. Her power, amplified and twisted by Karad's dark science, could awaken the slumbering horror and bend it to his will. Skora felt a cold knot of fear in his gut, a sense of impending doom that he had never known before. But he pushed it aside, focusing on the task at hand. They had to find the superweapon first, had to destroy it before Karad could claim his prize. It would be a race against time, a desperate gamble with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. But as he looked at Nesso, at the fierce determination in her eyes, Skora knew that he would fight to the bitter end. For her, for the innocence she sought to protect, and for the chance to make right the wrongs of his past. They began to gather allies, reaching out to those who had been wronged by Karad or the Council. Disillusioned warriors, rogue mercenaries, rebel factions from a dozen worlds, it was a ragtag army, held together by little more than hope and desperation, but it was all they had. Together, they launched a series of daring raids against Karad's strongholds, sabotaging his ships and stealing his secrets. Each victory, however small, 
brought them one step closer to their goal, one step closer to the superweapon and the final confrontation that would decide the fate of the galaxy. But even as they fought and bled and sacrificed, Skora could sense a growing darkness in Nesso. The strain of her power, the weight of her destiny, was taking its toll. She grew distant, withdrawn, as if some great burden was slowly crushing her spirit. Skora tried to reach her, to offer what comfort and support he could, but he was a warrior, not a healer. He could only watch helplessly as she slipped further and further away, consumed by the very power that made her so special. At last they found what they were seeking, the superweapon hidden on a remote, uncharted world, its surface scoured by the winds of time. Karad was already there, his army entrenched and waiting. The final battle had begun. Skora led the charge, his blaster spitting fire as he carved a path through the enemy lines. Beside him, Nesso fought with a grim determination, her powers holding the superweapon at bay, keeping it from awakening. But Karad was a cunning foe, and his forces seemed endless. For every soldier they cut down, two more took their place. Slowly, inexorably, they were pushed back, driven towards the brink of defeat. In a last desperate gamble, Skora challenged Karad to single combat, a final duel to decide the fate of the galaxy. The warlord accepted with a cruel smile, his eyes gleaming with sadistic glee. They met on the field of battle, two titans locked in mortal combat. Karad was strong, his armor impervious to Skora's blows. But Skora was faster, more agile, and he had something Karad could never understand, a cause worth fighting for. They traded blows in a deadly dance, neither giving quarter nor asking for mercy. But even as he fought, Skora could feel his strength waning, his body battered and broken. In that moment, as despair threatened to overwhelm him, Nesso's voice rang out across the battlefield. She had made her choice, had decided to embrace her destiny, no matter the cost. With a scream of defiance, she unleashed the full might of her power, pouring every ounce of her being into the superweapon. It began to glow, to pulse with an otherworldly light as Neso's life force flowed into its ancient circuits. Skora watched in horror, realizing too late what she intended. He tried to reach her to stop her, but it was no use. With a final blinding flash, the superweapon exploded, consuming Neso and Karad and his army in a cataclysmic blast of pure energy. When the smoke cleared, nothing remained but a vast crater, a scar upon the face of the planet. Skora knelt at its edge, tears streaming down his face as he mourned the loss of the woman who had saved them all. In the days that followed, the galaxy hailed him as a hero, the savior who had defeated Karad and destroyed the superweapon. The council, purged of its traitorous members, offered him a place of honor, a chance to shape the future of the galaxy. But Skora refused, turning his back on the accolades and the adoration. He returned to his old life, to the shadows and the danger that had always been his home. Yet something had changed within him, a spark of light that Nesso had kindled in his soul. He no longer fought for greed or glory, but for something greater, something worth believing in. And as he set out on a new mission, a new quest to right the wrongs of the galaxy, Skora knew that Nesso would always be with him, guiding his steps and watching over him from beyond the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.